Immortals Phoenix Rising really surprised me this morning, but even more surprisingly, I have nice things to say about Google Stadia. What did you say? Hey, Jay Review. All right, before we get into Immortals Phoenix Rising, which is a terrible name with too many syllables and it's kind of, it just doesn't roll off the tongue, I'm going to tell you guys why you need to play this after I've tried the demo. I was just blown away by the experience. But first, let's just talk about Google Stadia for a moment. You know that platform that we all laughed at a year ago and then mostly ignored since? Well, that's what I've been doing. It caught my attention because this demo of Immortals Phoenix Rising is now available exclusively through uh, Stadia as a demo. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to go check it out. Stadia is free. Uh, if you have, I have a Gmail account, so I just went to the Stadia website, made my account for free, didn't go with the pro thing, which is a, a paid subscription, and I just jumped right into the demo with no download, no like confirmation, no waiting, and I played with my Xbox One controller and my PC. So as much as we all love to hate on Stadia, I have to say, uh, getting into this demo and trying it is actually a really good use of the platform. And I got, I was surprised that I had no input lag or frame drops or anything. Like it was smooth. It was like playing on my PC. It was crazy. So anyways, Google Stadia, you win a point this time. Now let's talk about Immortals Phoenix Rising, which is of course one of those Breath of the Wild clones that's coming out later uh, in December by Ubisoft. This demo's out. It lets you kind of play around uh, the island um, and, and try out the different mechanics, but this game really surprised me because when it was originally unveiled as Gods and Monsters, I think was the original name of this until someone complained, it everyone's like, oh, okay, it's Breath of the Wild. And then Genshin Impact came out and everyone's like, okay, everybody's doing Breath of the Wild. And I was like, that's okay. Being influenced by a really popular game means you're gonna probably have a pretty solid game if you do it right. And then Genshin Impact came out, it's a gotcha game. I played it for like 30 minutes, couldn't get into it, didn't care for it. And then I kind of lost hope on the other Breath of the Wild clones because Ubisoft, I find their games as fun as they are, they don't always seem to have the, the same level of depth or polish that I expect from other games or that I see in other games. So yeah, my expectations were pretty low for this. So I, I popped this in this morning, just tried it out and blew me away. Like everything about this game blew me away. Um, where to even start? Where to even start? Let's go with the combat because that thing is, had a lot more depth than I thought. So where we are in the demo, and I have no concept of like how far this is supposed to represent in the game or what's gonna happen. But anyways, what I saw in the demo, you basically have a heart attack um, that you use through, or a strong attack that you use through your ax. You have your quick attack that you use with the sword. And then you have your bow and arrow, which the arrows recharge automatically if you wait. So you have like access to 10 arrows. You can just launch them all off at once. And then you wait and uh, you can you can kind of, they, they just reload. Outside of those standard attacks, you have special attacks if you, that you can do like, um, so if you hold the left button and then you hold the trigger button for like the strong attack, you pull out like a magical hammer beam that just destroys, makes even more damage. So between the weapons and the combos, and the combos I saw that there are skill trees, so you can unlock different skills and, and go even crazier with the types of skills you want. In this demo, there were pretty much just two skills unlocked. You had the big hammer thing, and then you had like spikes coming out of the ground to, to do a, a pretty good AOE attack. All of that is good. On top of that, you can actually combo with your um, weapons. So for example, if you just hit the sword attack, it's a quick like shoop and you just, you know, it's a quick attack. But if you hold that button, you're gonna send the enemy up in the air, which you can then follow up with, let's say three, three, uh, three axe attacks to do even more damage. And then when they hit the ground, you just bring out your hammer, creating all sorts of really cool combos that way. Um, and outside of that, there's even more strategy to battles, which I didn't even think was gonna happen in this game. So there's a bunch of stuff strewn around the land, like there's rocks and things, and you can pick up anything you want, and it's not picked up with your arms, you like pick it up with energy or something, I don't know, it's like telekinesis. And then you can toss that. So you can toss it to enemies, you can do whatever you want with these objects. In fact, one boss, you had that, that was the effective strategy to fight them. If you used your weapons, you did like 30 to 50 damage. If you threw a rock at them, it did 300 damage. So the mechanic of throwing things was really cool. What surprised me even more on top of all of this was when I realized I was fighting a mob and one super strong enemy in that mob did like an AOE attack that damaged 
the other enemies. And as I was like kind of darting between enemies and dodging their attacks, they were hitting each other. And I was realizing, oh my God, the enemies can actually inflict damage to each other, which creates a whole different element of strategy for combat. And then they even added a whole like stealth attack. So if you're quiet and you crouch and you sneak up on people, um, you, you can like do a, a stealth attack, which gives you kind of a upper hand in a battle. So all of these elements, they worked really well, but more importantly, they were really fun and really smooth to play. At first, I was a little bit cautious because the strong attack is mapped to the right trigger. It has more of that Dark Souls uh, controller configuration, whereas I'm more used to having the, the face buttons be uh, my attacks. That's not so bad because the game lets you remap all the buttons however you want. So I only realized that towards the end of the demo. Uh, if I play the game, I will probably remap everything to be more uh, aligned with my play style. But for the demo, I just went with the default controls, which weren't necessarily my favorite, but it could grow on to me. So just the combat, lots, lots just lots of fun to be had there. Now, when uh, there's also exploration, and when you look at the exploration side, again, all of the Breath of the Wild, speaking of the Breath of the Wild comparison, your weapons don't break, which is another big plus. So for exploration, you can do anything that you would expect to do in a Breath of the Wild type of game. So you have a glider uh, that lets you jump off anything and you can glide and explore. You can climb anything you want, very much like Breath of the Wild. You have a stamina meter. Uh, you can pick up a bunch of ingredients everywhere that you can eventually cook and craft with. And this is really cool. The crafting system is something um, I didn't get to explore much in the demo, but I would love to see it go. The potential is there. So you can grab things to craft potions and upgrade your potions even. Uh, you can also do crafting, like upgrade your armor and weaponry with the things you find out in the world. And that is something that I think would have been fantastic in Breath of the Wild. And the fact that they've got it here makes it even that much more interesting to run around the world and grab everything so that you can get stronger. Uh, and then there's, of course, there's chests, there's puzzles that remind me very much of Zelda, but um, it's done in its own unique way. Now, the whole game is made up of, uh, it's in the universe of Greek mythology. So it really has a very strong, unique theme here. And if you're into Greek mythology, it's, it's even more fun. And if you're not, it's a cool setting. And from what I could tell from the demo, it starts off with pretty much Zeus and I think it's Prometheus. I could be wrong. It's the god that is punished by being tied to a rock for all eternity. I'm pretty sure it's not Prometheus, but I don't remember their name. So basically Zeus and this guy are bantering the whole time, trying to tell a story. And the story that they're telling is the one that you're playing. I assume the main character is Phoenix. I could be wrong. And basically they're narrating what's going on. So as you hit key points in your exploration, uh, you'll hear these two go off. And Zeus is kind of portrayed as a little bit of an arrogant jerk who's making stuff up as he go. And the other guy's constantly correcting him. And they're just kind of hitting these like really fun notes of banter and, and comedy throughout. And then sometimes the main character chimes in and just breaks the fourth wall. And is like, what are you guys talking about? I'm not going to do that. Um, it just makes it that much more fun. So everything I want to really emphasize, everything here is fun. Exploring is fun. Combat is fun. The comedy, like the, the narration, fun. Ubisoft, I really hope the game lives up to the demo. Outside of that, there's also um, customization and upgrades, which are the last thing I really want to talk about with this demo. By the way, the demo lasted about, I, I would say almost an hour. I was an hour in there having a good time. So customizations, I noticed that if you kind of go off the beaten path and you explore, you can get all sorts of different customization, different wings, different weapons. And I don't know if there's a multiplayer aspect to this game or if that's planned, but I could see that going a pretty long way. And I could also see microtransactions sneaking their way in because you've got like a lot of ways to customize your character and build them out how you want and what you think is cool. If you want to be someone all like decked out in gold and, and be you know, mighty and uh, what's the word? I don't know. Righteous, righteous. You can do that. But if you want to be like um, kind of an undead character that's just kind of oozing with death and darkness, you can be that too. So you can play however you want. The upgrade system, um, again, is not something that's explored too much in the demo, but there's a lot of, just when I look in the menu, I was like, oh, wow, there's a lot that I can upgrade here. I can upgrade my potions. I can upgrade my armor. I can upgrade pretty much anything. I can upgrade my skills. There's like 
three different skill trees uh, for different things. Then you have like potion skill trees. There's so much stuff to do in this game. I'm just like salivating at how much I can do this winter when this game finally comes out. And then lastly, I don't usually talk about this, but um, I was streaming the demo over on my Twitch channel. A lot of people were asking me about like options and user interface. So we checked that out. And this game has a lot of options. I've never seen a demo really showcase so many options, but like you can customize pretty much what you see on screen if you want like a lot of displays or if you want nothing on there. Um, there's a lot of language support. I say a lot, it's five, but I think that's pretty good. So in terms of your text, uh, language you can choose out of five there's five different like voiceover options which that's a lot of work on their part so pretty cool that they added that in um and i didn't go through everything but it did look like there were uh, a lot more options to pretty much like i said you could customize your controller as well so overall i was curious about this game the demo has now convinced me i need i need this game and I want to buy it on day one, and I will buy it on day one. And I had to share this with you guys because I was really not expecting to find this much in this game, which it feels like it's not being hyped enough. And I know it's not Ubisoft's best year in terms of PR. Uh, and the fact that the whole game kind of got relabeled from Gods and Monsters to a new game that is far worse title, I think is hurting it. But I think this is going to be a sleeper hit. I think a lot of people are going to be surprised when it comes out. And I really hope um, enough people play this because there's something really magical here if the demo is truly an indication of what you know the rest of the game is anyways like i said you guys can try the demo out it doesn't matter if you like stadia or not if you have a phone a browser and a gmail account you can go and try this demo like that you don't have to download anything you don't have to give your credit card you don't have to sign up for anything it's actually really easy and cool and props to ubisoft and stadia for making it so accessible so go check it out and then let me know in the comments what you think of the demo and if you're going to be picking this game up at launch otherwise i'll see you on the next hey dear review until then keep it classy